just the American meat. Americans like beef. Yeah, I mean, there's just nothing more American than a hamburger or a steak on a grill. This is really what we are. This is the American food. I'm Jessica Applestone. And I'm Joshua Applestone. We own Fleischer's Grass-Fed and Organic Meats, and we're located in Kingston, New York, and Rhinebeck, New York. Think great beef means marbled fat and prime cuts? Think again. Originally trained as a chef, Joshua Applestone believes in bringing customers beef raised the old-fashioned way, pasture-raised and grass-fed. Ah. In upstate New York, he and his wife Jessica run Fleischer's, where you will experience the bovine rhapsody of your grandparents. Until you've tried it, you may find you've never truly tasted beef at all. I can lift up a VW. Wait, we want me to the scale over here? Why don't you hang on a second, cut so. Before World War II, all animals were raised on either 100% grass or grass-fed grain finished, which is what we do here, both of those. 159.7. After World War II, because of economic reasons, people started raising their animals almost fully on grain, and that's when the big shift started. Animals get much fatter, much faster on grain. Faster to market. Yeah, and so they were able to bring their steer into market probably six to eight months faster. Almost was, a year sometimes. Sometimes a year, and it was a significant difference. When an animal whose primary source of protein changes from grass to grain, it's not so good for them because they are ruminant animals and they can't tolerate grain. What happens is an animal is put on antibiotics immediately and also steroids. So now 95%, probably more, 98%, 98 yeah. of the American steer are raised in this way. That system to us is ruining how Americans eat. It's bad for the health of the animals, it's bad for the health of the environment, it's bad for people's health. And made that conscious decision that this is not what we're going to do and it's not what we're going to sell and it's not what we're going to promote. If you ask older people, like my dad, for example, who's in his 80s, he remembers what actual beef tasted like because that's what he grew up with. You didn't have to go to a boutique butcher to get it. That's what everyone ate. It becomes earthy, it becomes beefy. It just tastes like, you know, what meat should taste like. You can always tell that you're getting 100% grass-fed because of the color of the fat. See how yellow the fat is here? The minute an animal starts ingesting grain of any type, the fat becomes white. This is a conventionally raised animal. Everything that we don't believe in is what's represented in this steak. Can you please take this garbage and put it somewhere else? Thank you. So it's supposedly higher quality piece of meat. You've got ribbons of fat, not great for you. We are what we eat and animals are what they eat. So if they're eating something that's not good for them, their fat is not good for us. Okay, so this is 100% grass fed. Very, very little intramuscular marbleization. This fat has um, a high amount of omega-3, 6s and 9s and a high amount of CLAs. Those are good cancer fighting okay. fats. With sound effects and everything. Right. So we're going to be doing the same thing to both steaks. This is the <coughs> conventional. And this is our 100% grass fed. Uh -huh. Very nice. Colin, this is Kendra. She's going to be apprenticing with us. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Kendra. She's going to be trying the difference between conventionally raised steak and 100% grass fed steak. This is the conventional. This is the grass fed. Wow. Yeah. That hits you right away. The conventional beef, it's a nice piece of steak. Most of the flavor is coming from the crust, you know, with the butter and the salt and all the nice things. Um, this, it's just hit my palate right away. It's kind of like a fine wine. The earthiness on the tongue that just blossoms and blooms. I, I'm tasting this in more areas of my mouth than right. I did the other. Like, it immediately hits the, you know, the front of my tongue. And just with this kind of, for lack of a better word, really fresh. All of our employees go through this once they taste our meat. And the look on their face was if they had just tried beef for the very first time. It would never fail to amaze them, and it never failed to amaze me. 15 minutes. The way that we judge meat in this country is by fat content. That's what prime and choice mean. Hey, how are you? What can I get for you? 
a lot of people that come in really are surprised. They're looking for the really high end, prime meaning very fatty. And they think it needs to be marbled with fat to provide a great taste. There's no other possibility for an animal to gain that kind of weight unless you feed it grain. This is 100% grass-fed beef. I don't know if you've done that before. We have the three different types of customers. We have customers that are here because of philosophy. We have customers that are here because of health reasons. And then we have customers who come here because our meat tastes better. That's a lot of food. How about two of these and one of these? We use every part of the animal. A nose to tail philosophy. Right. We break down the leg, loin, arm chuck, which we get brisket, chuck eye, and you know, a nice amount of ground beef. There's a lot of cuts that we do that nobody else does. It's probably something that you know existed in the past, but not now. This is something called the terrace major. It's one of the leanest cuts around. You'll never see this cut in the supermarket. And we call it here at Fleischer's a faux filet. We usually wrap it in our own bacon. We sell little nuggets of love, and it's unbelievably tender. We must have this phone call at least three times a week, and they'll say, can we get 50 pounds of hanger steak a week? And we'll say, do you realize that there's one hanger steak per animal? That's it's it. Three Just, quarters of a pound right. per animal. That's it, OK? Whatever you're you talking about. You see hanger steak on the menu. Great. Right. It's not sustainable. Not sustainable. It's that not, means that you're yeah. killing 50 animals a week just for that hanger steak. That's a pretty healthy steak. I would say three people could almost eat that. We go through four animals a week here. You have to balance that out. You know, eat every part of the animal. We're all about not only a nose-to-tail philosophy here, we're about nose-to-tail eating.